Well, good afternoon or good morning or wherever you are in the country today. Welcome uh, to the webinar series here that we're going to get started this year for SolidWorks Electrical um, Creating Solutions. We have a number of different areas that we will be covering, but the first area that we will be covering is resolving collaboration issues. I'm Sherry Gunsbiller Mason. I'm located in northern lower Michigan, uh, in the middle of the snow. I have um, over 30 years of experience in electrical engineering. Prior to coming on board here with Go Engineer, previously uh, Decide Solutions, and this is my very first webinar under the Go Engineering brand, which I'm very excited for. I'm looking for any type of feedback or questions uh, that you would like to have further answered, which we will go through some of the software and then I will show you what I can here in our limited time. All right, so let's just get started. Um, what I want to talk about here is the electrical software and collaboration. Uh, obviously, collaboration means to, to work with one another, to be able to cooperate. I have found that that is not necessarily the case when we are talking about being able to do that in a uh, manufacturing environment. Some of the really uh, nice quotes that I have found along the way were, alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much by Helen Keller. And truly that is a big role in uh, collaboration. Uh, also talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence actually wins the championships. Obviously we have a number of talented people that are very successful in the companies that you work for. That being the case, being able to use them to, to the full advantage is where we are looking for this collaboration, specifically to make your company more successful. Uh, so a successful company collaborates successfully. It would be very nice um, if we were originally taught when we were younger, and I'm speaking from my generation, of course, that we were always put into groupings. And those groupings then had to learn how to work together once we were out in that manufacturing environment. Nowadays, you're finding things like FIRST Robotics, uh, lots more teamwork type uh, discoveries that are happening throughout different environments with uh, the companies. Um, and so we find that concurrent design between departments provides that advantage of reduced time to market because no longer are you having to deal with consecutive developing, but you are working concurrently, which in that case, collaboration is extremely a necessity. Here we're going to look at just a couple of different examples in the collaboration aspect. We're talking about communicating locations for specific devices, communicating what devices are needed for a design, also communicating where specific wires, cables, or pipes might be routed. And lastly, we'll look at some communicating of the lengths of those wires and pipes. Par uh, wires and pipes required for a project. That type of information in the past would go through multiple hands. It would be transferred through DXFs, PDFs, emails, meetings, phone calls, a number of different ways. And what we're trying to do here is be able to take that into the next level where not all of those are required and that information can be handled dynamically. So what we're gonna look at here are the very first two with communicating locations of specific devices and then what those devices are that are needed for a specific design and how a company might use them. In SolidWorks Electrical and both the schematic and the 3D we're going to look at today here is an automation project that has been developed part of the way. We're going to look specifically at this Motor 614. The SQL is automatically gleaning a number of information and representations of this motor. You can not only see where it's physically located, but how it's connected up even to the point of the cabling. Now, for a mechanical guy, 
this 14.6 millimeter wire is required or gauge of a cable is required. I want you to notice that uh, length of that 9.75 meters. We're going to also take this directly into the SOLIDWORKS environment, which is the 3D environment, which is using the electrical 3D product here. You can still view those projects that are happening and being developed by the electrical, where you can preview things, but at the same time, you have that connection to the mechanical environment. Mechanical engineers might be placing those devices in these locations like this conveyor motor here. That conveyor motor right now only knows that it is a 3D part. Once you marry or associate the electrical, that same 614 motor, that association now is being transferred between the two environments where the information is not only here, but it's also, notice the check mark here, it knows that it's associated, but also there is some additional information being transferred back to the three, or back to the schematic as well. So here we're talking about those cases of being able to communicate those locations and the devices themselves. Let's take another look just a little bit further in depth here with how those wires or pipes would be routed as well as those links that would be required without having to use a ball of wire, um, tape measures, guessing. With that in mind, let's look at that motor a little bit more. Notice on the left hand side here in your feature tree, you also see the 614 but you see this EW path that is happening. It is a 3D sketch telling you exactly where this W10 cable is going to be routed. In schematic here, we also see that it is attached to the specific components being uh, the locations of L1 and L4, which are just sub-assemblies, but also the motor itself with each terminal and where those conductors are going to play a part in the connections of those routings. Taking that into effect, going back into SOLIDWORKS, when I am looking at this, I am wanting to go from the, the terminal strip, which we are gleaning from this here, and we're gonna place that into the panel. And at the same time, we are going to go ahead and start looking at the route here. We've got some cable tray, along with the fact that we have our 3D sketch. Now this is just an assembly that is inside of our electrical that we are going to route to. And using some routing parameters, a quick click of a button, short amount of a wait here, we get a cable that not only knows what that diameter is that we then placed, but also the route itself on how it's going to look and what that length is. So let's just hide that sketch here and we'll look at where it goes through that cable tray, making sure that uh, it's actually following the path that we want. It's coming out, going through a cable gland, and then getting terminated directly at the terminals. That is because it knows from the schematic how it was getting connected. All of that information is transferred from one side of this platform to the other. Notice that 9.5 meters now. It has updated the length of that cable to the correct length based off of the route that I am looking for. Taking this just a little bit further, we can also look at the fact of what a report would look like that is a dynamic report. I didn't have to do anything here. Notice it automatically picked it up in inches and has recalculated what that length is. That information is being transferred now where you can provide it to the different departments and have all that type of information available at your fingertips. 
Let's take a look at just a couple of other projects that we have in electrical. You know, some people may not be doing automation equipment. You might be working on something like a harness. Well, if you're working on a harness, the same type of applications or features and functions are available to you. You can open up a project and preview it in mechanical. You can see how things are connected up, what they are connected to, how they are connected without ever opening up the electrical schematic software for previewing. You are not actually doing the design in the 3D for anything with the schematic. Here we're going to look at this fact that with this case here we've got these connectors that Mechanical has placed. But again that associativity is still required for this one connector that has not been associated yet. So we'll pick that 3D model, go ahead and then associate it. This is then figuring out that that J1 is required and part of this harness. Again we've got another sketch which is just telling us that where we want this routed. Now I have it in open space, but you could use contoured surfaces and then offset those surfaces to be able to give you some lines for being able to follow on a path. This harness itself has many pieces to it. It has six connectors, but it also has a number of wires with each of those wires going to a specific point and landing. In order to have that type of information available and be able to do things like routing this, <clears throat> excuse me, you are here being able to use the information that has been designed from someone else, being able to bring it into this platform to have something that is available for full use to be able to take this to the next step where you can either make drawings, you can do things like what we're going to see here in just a moment. Once this harness is complete, it is drawing out each wire individually and creating that harness with coverings where you can then take that and go to the routing aspects, being able to edit this route being able to do things like going ahead and adding coverings or uh, bends, uh, splices, um, tie wraps, um, all of that type of information is right here under this area of simply edit route, adding those specifics, including being able to flatten this being able to take both an annotated view or a manufactured view you can take that into an actual drawing where you might make some adjustments to the graphs so that they are more in a presentable view but then you have a full cut list maximizing the efficiency of SolidWorks to give you those lengths back here on the schematic you can also do that same information in this type of line diagram format where you're creating those drawings and you have that available but you would draw it rather than the software creating it for you. Here is just what that background schematic might look like. It's simply a matter of connections, associativity, and being able to give you that feedback to the other platform. Now that's just harnessing but what if you're doing something like hydraulics or pneumatics. Here I've got just a simple hydraulic tank that we are going to add some additional information to using even simple copy paste. In schematic will allow you to be able to maximize the use of things that you've already applied, drawing the wires or the pipes. It works the same as if you were drawing an electrical connection you can draw a hydraulic connection so this can also be used by mechanical so on the mechanical side you might take something like again a pump and place that 3d pump into your assembly being able to auto route those larger pipes especially if it's black pipe you might need SolidWorks Premium along with that but you can in SolidWorks here 
using the 3D electrical add-in, be able to take those routes and do things like auto route or be able to create a route but then still modify it for the specific locations that you are looking for. You can specify it, you can stretch it, you can modify it. Those functions are still available to you for full functionality that you can then use in both schematic and in your mechanical. Here I can even look for, say I forgot what I am looking for when I am placing this ball valve. Well, I can go back into my schematic look at what I need. Okay, it should be V3. So that when I go over to my component list here, I can grab that ball valve and put it in the right location for the edit of the route that I am working with. Those types of things, very easy to work with. And hopefully you'll find some added benefit because not only your electrical team, but your mechanical team can work with this and make this just that much easier. So what I'm talking about here is things, again, communicating locations for specific devices. You can drop those in either in schematic using locations or also in your 3D. Again, what devices are needed for the design? We'll look at some of this information on how that can be added in one of the next webinars, but here know that you have that available to, uh, available to you. Communicating where specific wires, cables, or pipes should be routed. Utilizing those same routing paths, you can now have them utilize that path, that 3D sketch on your assembly to follow that and be able to do those automatically and at the same time still be able to route them afterwards or edit them afterwards. And then lastly, communicating lengths of wires and pipe required for a project. You've got SolidWorks available to you. SolidWorks will feed that back to you for that collaboration and dynamic updating. It's not required. You can do just the schematic side without ever going into the 3D. But that 3D platform is definitely that next step that definitely will help with that collaborative environment. We'll be able to take this information even further when we start looking at some more areas like reports where we can take that directly to purchasing. But for now, that is the information that I have for you. I wanted to open this up. You know that there is a chat window or as well as the question and answer area. Please, um, any questions that you do have, um, go ahead and add those. If not, um, that is what we are going to have for today. Thank you for taking those few minutes out with me. I would like to ask that any feedback be uh, sent back to me. I would greatly appreciate any feedback that you have or if you have interest in other areas. We're going to be looking in this webinar series at both uh, change management, reporting, some system integration, and some other areas as well. So please look for those registration emails coming out here in the near future. But if you're looking for more specific information, please reach out to Go Engineer, or you can reach out to me directly. I'd love to talk with you to answer more questions or be able to give you more information, whether it be a demo. Uh, Go Engineer does lots of demos. We also do hands-on test drives and lunch and learns. If you have a number of people that are interested in your area, please go ahead and let us know. I greatly appreciate it, and I thank you so much for your time. Have a great day, everyone.